Hello, welcome everybody. Here is your video on problem 2011. Um, I'm going to read through some of this and highlight a few things just to kind of show you what you should have learned. Uh, the function g is defined from x bigger than 0. Okay, so I don't care about negatives. Here is a point on the original g graph, 1, 2. Here is the derivative of g. So the derivative tells me a few things about g. Number one, it tells me the increasing and decreasing behavior. Number two, it tells me slopes of the tangent line. And then here's the second derivative of g. It gives me the answer here, so I don't have to take the derivative of g, which is kind of nice. Um, but this could tell me concavity, and it could also tell me points of inflection. So for part A, find all the values of x on this little tiny interval, 0.12 to 1, at which g has a horizontal tangent line. So the, the thing that I would have done is a horizontal tangent line means that the derivative equals 0. So anytime you have the derivative equals 0, you have a horizontal tangent line. So I'm going to kind of sketch a picture of what I, I did here. What I did is I typed in... Um, in my y1 function, um, the, the first derivative, so g prime of x. And then in y2, I typed in g double prime of x. Now, to have a horizontal tangent line, g prime must be equal to 0. So that occurs in two spots. So once you graph that original function, um, let me just graph this real quick so I can kind of sketch what it looks like to you. It has this weird little looking feel to it. Um, kind of looks like this. Um, graphing this involves a little parenthesis work and stuff like that. So it looks like this and like this. So now the way I graphed it is I made my x minimum here, this starting point, point 0.1 even though it says 0.12, I made a little bit extra, and then I went all the way to 1 for my x maximum, so here. So I'm really going from 0.1 to 1 on my x-axis, just to look at these spots. So the derivative has a horizontal tangent line. I have to kind of check all my values, and really the only key value is this point right there and that point right there, which happens to be 0.163 and 0.359. So did you get your point by taking that derivative and setting it equal to zero. You have to communicate that to the readers, and then you have to have both answers here, 0.163 and 0.359. If you do, you get your two points. Moving on, uh, part B says, on which subinterval, same thing, does the graph of G concave down? Okay, well, concave down means that the second derivative must be negative, so you need to have that plan. So what you need to do is you need to take this... Um, second derivative and set it equal to zero so you can figure out when the second derivative is negative in that interval. So this is another really tricky graph. So let me kind of produce this graph and show you what I get. Once again, uh, like this here would be like the x-axis, but I'm only looking on my interval from point 0.1, right here is point 0.1, all the way to 1.0. Now, I originally looked at 0.12, which the problem told me, but 0.12 was really tricky because it was on the edge of the graph. So I had to mess with this. This is a tricky graphing calculator problem. Once you graph this, it, if you're looking in this window right here, your graph looks like this. Zoom, zoom, and then it goes off the graph and then it kind of comes down here and does one of these things. looks like an asymptote. So the key points are this guy right there and this guy right there. That's when you figure out when the second derivative equals 0. So that's 0.129, the first one. And then this second one here is 0.222734. So your answer is this interval right here because in this spot right there, the, the graph is concave down because the second derivative is negative. So you needed to have this accurate now, of course, to three decimal places, so 0.129 or 0.130, and 0.222 or 0.223. So that's the answer. So what interval is a G concave down? Justification is because the second derivative is negative or less than zero on that interval. This here is all just supporting documentation. 
on to part C, write an equation for the tangent line of G, one of the most trickiest tangent lines you're ever going to have to write for this one. Tangent line is pretty simple. You need a point and you need a slope. So how do you do this? Well, the slope is kind of easy. You can just use your graph. If you want to plug it in, you're certainly welcome to. I just have this plugged into my Y1, so I substituted 0.3. I did kind of like a trace on my graphing calculator to just get this slope answer that. So that's worth one point. Now the next thing is a point. The point is G, and this is at 0 0.3, of 0 0.3. So that's all I need to do is figure out the Y. Now the trickiest part of this one is they do not give me in the problem g of 0.3, which they always do, except this is a unique one where they don't. So what do I have to do? I have to figure it out. How do you figure it out? Through an integral. You have to do this little one of two thing because it's the only position you know. Right there, it's the only position you know. And then this is its change in position from 1 to 0.3. So you need that integral. You need any integral. If you took any integral of g prime at all, you get a second point. Now, what do you really have to do? You either have to take this 2 and add it from 1 to 0.3 because you're moving backwards in time, or if you took a 2 minus 0.3 to 1, that's a 1, of g prime. So you could have done that too. So this is an acceptable answer, this is an acceptable answer, but the bottom line is, to get this 0.3, the answer is 1.546. Now how do we finish it out? Well, then you got your point and your slope, and here is your equation, kind of with point-slope form, but with this um, moved to the other side. Now there is, uh, can I move all this up here? There is an, another acceptable answer for this. I did it on my paper here, which I'll write in here which if you put it in point-slope form and simplified it, I don't recommend it, but you could have done it. 0.472, which is the same thing, 0.472, and that's a negative, um, x. And then if you combined and distributed and did all that stuff, you get plus 1.6876, plus 1.6876. For those of you who love slope-intercept form, you could have done it that way also. Last problem, part D. Does the tangent line of the graph lie above or below the, line, the graph of G? Uh, this one's one of those above and below questions which always confuses me. Is it increasing? Is it decreasing? Is it concave up or concave down? Since it talks about a tangent line, I just think about it. It's all about concavity. A tangent line would be below if you have a concave up. A tangent line would be above if you have a concave down. So you just have to check concavity for this problem. So if you check the interval only that's important, 0.3 to 1, you're going to find that the second derivative by the graph on your graphing calculator is always bigger than 0. Therefore, you have a concave, um, greater than 0 concave up situation. So therefore, you have this kind of thing. So the graph lies below. So the answer is below, and the reason is due to concave up, or you could have said the second derivative is positive. Um, second derivative is positive in that interval. Um, so there you go. That's your ninth point. Good luck for that. This is a tricky question, particularly with all the difficulty of using the graphing calculator. Thanks for listening.